Hello, welcome to the World's Fastest Car Show, and this is an episode when we don't go fast at all. The folks at Land Rover have given us their brand new Range Rover uh, to take on an off-road course. So, um, this is the world's slowest car show. in one of those high-powered vehicles, I turn everything off because I want as little intervention as I can from the electronics on the car. It's just the control freak racing driver in me. But when it comes to off-road driving, the Range Rover offers five off-road settings, which now what I'm going to run is full auto, which actually the computer, the electronic, the sensors on the car will be continually monitoring what's going on and then sort of putting the systems and the set of the, the suspension and the diff and everything into the appropriate settings and the parameters of each of those five modes as is suitable for the conditions we're in. And now it's all up to my own weakness as a slow driver. Isn't it funny, they'll trust you with a 200 mile an hour car, but when it comes to the most recent state-of-the-art Range Rover and the fact that we're in a very unfamiliar environment for nearly all of us um, they have put me in the capable hands of JP who's going to act as my instructor here I'm heading towards a little bit of a descent right now which actually I can't even see where I'm going so what do I have to look out for here JP as we're about to go down a downhill well, Obviously there's uh, opportunity for arboreal encounters all over the place. Now I've never heard it put like that, but that means you hit a bloody tree, which you definitely don't want to do. But heading down this quite steep bank here, when I'm in low range it automatically engages hill descent, which is quite an eerie feeling because uh, you're so used to physics and the dynamics of gravity taking effect that it just pulls you down the hill. Look at that, you have to be so precise with the front of the car for that wheel placement between these trees. Actually very, very orchestrated. You don't want to do anything, you know, I'm used to full opposite lock. The, the challenge for me now is to see how slowly I can do stuff. Oh, okay. And, and that, that, that's, that's, that's re really part of the art. So now we're heading for a sort of stretch of the terrain here that I can imagine we, what you call articulate the chassis, isn't it? Because I can feel with these offset bumps and ruts that you can see on the display down here that it actually shows you the two axles completely accurately displaying the articulation of what the car is doing. It's actually just very cool and the sophistication of the suspensions and the systems. Actually, this isn't an easy piece of road. The ride quality, you're not really sensing the severity of the terrain through the vehicle. Yeah. And then that's what separates us from other vehicles. It's yeah. That traditionally, a beam axle was the desired axle of choice for yeah. off-roading. Remembering first gear is a very active gear, so if you're in first going up a hill and you add gas, all of a sudden, you've got wheel spin. Yeah. Spinning wheels don't get you anywhere, but we have things like traction control and nice and easy. This is where first gear and a little bit of left foot braking may come into play. Okay. All the way to the right. All the way to the right. There we go. Nice and easy on that brake. We don't want to stuff the, the uh, front in there. Front do left. So it's well, still it's all about weight transfer. Just the same as in a mm -hmm. on, on a track. You just want to keep the platform from from really overloading at the wrong moment. Side angle does get your heart going, doesn't it? Uh, Suddenly. And there is a tendency to want to steer uphill in that yeah, kind of I know. situation. Believe it, me, I want to steer it, everywhere. <laughs> so. There. Probably left right rear tire off the ground a little bit there. It's More quite incredible. It's quite incredible because you really do rely on the 
approach and exit angle, don't you, by having that ride height so high. It's, it stops you not just ploughing the front in, but also you forget about something I completely didn't think about, is what the rear of the car would do as we go up the hill. We have a centre differential lock and a rear differential lock. So, we, so on the diff we have two diffs effectively. With the centre differential we're allowing for different uh, different wheel speeds between the front and rear axle. In the rear and the front there's two differentials which allow for a difference in speed. Really the, the they're both infinitely variable. It's like a clutch pack of five clutches yep. with a, a tuning fork on the front and you have the ability to vary that pressure on okay. the front of that pack. So you, you can slacken them or tighten them depending yep. on where the power needs to go in relationship to the front or rear axle in the case of the centre differential and left to right in that rear axle. So you can have the ability to lock that rear axle up so that uh, both wheels are turning in unison. Well JP, thanks so much for being my guide on this. I guess to sum it up, I would say that it is extraordinary that Land Rover with the new Range Rover uh, is carrying on that heritage correct, of, of what this brand means, but also that I think a lot of people who are cruising the pickup lines, who are commuting to work, I think somewhere deep inside, if you own one of these, you know that you have a vehicle that can go where few others can. So thank you very much. We'll, uh, no problem. Now no, I want no to hit pleasure. the worlds. Now I want to go to Africa. Now I want to go to the Amazon. Now I want to go in the Sahara. Check back each week for more on your eBay Motors mobile app.